Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, and we're here for another half hour of libertarian-oriented discussion. Tonight we will be talking about the subject of youth rights and age discrimination. And with me to discuss that subject are Scott Davidson, Secretary of the National Youth Rights Association, which is a, um, an organization based in Washington, D.C., and Mr. Abu Abu, former president of Brooklyn's District 18 School Board, and now a producer at BCAT Studios. Um, we're going to start with you, uh, Scott Davidson. Tell me about this organization, the National Youth Rights Association. Why was it organized? What do you do? Well, the National Youth Rights Association was founded in late December of 1997 by members of another youth rights group who wanted to take the idea of lowering um, age restrictions and uh, forming public policy solutions that respected the dignity of young people, but to go about that in a, in a pragmatic, incremental way. And since then, we've become the country's largest youth rights organization. We have chapters throughout the country, and, you know, we have, we've lobbied for bills here in New York and in... Are there specific pet issues that you're working on at the moment? Yes, we are. Um, we, uh, we are working to lower the voting age in New York. We had uh, recently a, a bill to lower the minimum legal drinking age in Vermont. And we had, uh, we had a voting age bill in, in California, and we also uh, seek to democratize education to eliminate youth curfew laws and, and other things of this nature. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Abu, you are a um, school administrator. Uh, how do you feel about the uh, issue of democratizing education, as Mr. Davidson says? And um, how do you feel about these other easings of restrictions on... Um, on uh, the freedoms of youth. The gentleman here has not told us what age he's planning on lowering the drinking age and the voting age to. Fair and enough. Until he does it, I am unable to respond to it. Okay, well, to what age should the drinking age and the voting age be lowered, in your opinion? Well, um, what we always say is we don't know how far we should go. We just know what direction we should be heading. And right now, um, most of the, the legislation for the voting age is aimed at lowering the voting age to 16 because lawmakers and, and activists have said that this is this is a reasonable goal this is something that people could could go for and with the drinking age we feel that while it, it could be lower as it is in many countries we feel that 18 is a good place to start because at 18 you can be um, you can be in the military you can sign a contract you can do a number of other things but you you can't consume alcohol so Okay. We're shooting for 18 and 16. Mr. Abu, what do you have to say to that? Do you agree with him? Uh, the drinking age to 18 is not a bad age. It sounds pretty good. But lowering the voting age to 16, it's absurd. Why not 15? Why not 14? Why uh, not 13? No, I, I have to agree with Mr. Abu on this, actually. As a matter of fact, I think that uh, we would have a healthier and freer society if we made it harder to vote, not easier. You seem to feel that we should have more people voting. I say we should have fewer people voting. What, what's your position? Why do you think that more, more people ought to be voting? We don't necessarily feel that more people ought to be voting. We feel that more people should have the right to vote. And people uh, often come at me with the argument that, oh, you know, if you, if you lower the voting age to 16, you'll dilute the electorate. But what we say is that, f first, we, b we believe that 16-year-olds are competent enough to make informed decisions at the ballot box. But if you, if you don't believe that, you, you have to acknowledge that 16-year-olds who don't pay attention to politics, who don't feel that they have any stake in the political process, won't register. Voting isn't compulsory in the United States, and a 16-year-old who really is not interested in voting won't register. So it'll expand the electorate, but it, it won't mean that all of those people will vote. Okay. Um, I suppose that's a question of whether you want more democracy or less in, uh, in this country. My own position is that uh, democracy... It, you, the more democracy you have, the less freedom you have, but uh, that's just one point of view. You were talking, though, about further democratization of education. What did you mean by that? Well, we feel that, um, as the Supreme Court articulated in, in Tinker v. Des Moines in the early 70s, that the Constitution student shouldn't stop at the schoolhouse gate. That as long as a, student, um, a student's behavior isn't directly um, disrupting the educational process that they should have the same rights and privileges in school that they have elsewhere in society. And we feel that um, detentions, uh, mandatory attendance laws, and, and other uh, authoritarianism such as you know, the cell phone ban in New York public schools and, and random searches violate this, this principle. So you're talking about more liberty, not more democracy, correct? I, I suppose okay. you could make that distinction. Now, um, Mr. Abu, you've been a um, school administrator for some time. Uh, did you 
what, did you often receive complaints that uh, students didn't have enough uh, freedom in the, uh, in the schools that you supervised? I have never received one complaint that the students did not have any uh, the freedom that the gentleman here is discussing, not one complaint. Okay, but uh, do you uh, agree that uh, some of these causes that he supports with regard to um, a more uh, liberal or more um, libertine? R r r rather than democratize education, what I, what, what I would suggest, what I have done over the years is yeah. try to make a more better education for individuals in the, in the inner city. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, Mr. Uh, Davidson was talking about compulsory attendance. Do you think that school attendance ought to be compulsory, and if so, to what extent? I think it should be compulsory. I think the more the youngsters attend classes, the more they're exposed to the, uh, the process, and ergo, they, they will retain more of the instructions f uh, being the, to which they have been exposed. Okay. Now, Mr. Davidson, you were suggesting that um, you don't think that compulsory attendance at school is a good thing. Are you, is that the way you feel or? Um? That's the way I personally feel. The National Youth Rights Association's position paper on education doesn't expressly say that we're against compulsory education, but uh, a, a great deal of our membership is. And while I certainly feel that Mr. Abu is an authority on this subject and that he has the best intentions of young people in mind when he says that education should be compulsory, I feel that compulsory education was really created to um, address uh, societal and um, socioeconomic conditions that are no real longer really prevalent in this country, uh, like child labor and, and, and uh, you, you know, um, labor rights and so forth. And illiteracy too, I believe. Illiter well, yes, but we, we feel that young people have, and people of all ages really have an innate desire to learn, and that, and that this should be encouraged, and that they should, they should have the opportunity to, to learn in an, in an organized setting, but that when this is forced down someone's throat, that it, it, it kills their, their natural desire to, to become okay, knowledgeable. Okay, I'm, I'm inclined to agree to some extent. At any rate, do you believe, Mr. Abu, that uh, children have an innate desire to learn? Uh, I think it, it could be fostered in a school setting, in a s structured setting. Uh, I, 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 children do have an innate desire to learn, but unless they're exposed uh, to uh, education in a structured setting, they tend to not learn as, as much as they should be learning. Okay, well, what, what would you say were some of the biggest problems that you encountered in your school system, District 18, when you were overseeing that operation? Lousy attendance of the youngsters. The kids were not in school when they should be in school, thereby they, 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 they were flunking out in alarming numbers. Why did they tend to stay away? Well, paucity the quality of the education in the school system. And they tend to roam the streets when they should be in school. If you're roaming the streets when you should be in school, chances are, and I'm being facetious, you're not being exposed. Yeah, well, of yeah. course. But you say that the uh, quality of the education is poor. Um, where would you say were the, the worst defects in the, um, in the quality of education these kids got? Was it just not interesting, or were they taught by incompetent teachers, or what? Incompetent teachers, the, 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 the curriculum was not interesting, it was, it was not culture-oriented, many, many reasons for that. The okay. teachers were substandard, the teachers did not care, many, many reasons why the kids were not learning. Okay. Well, That's why we have the problem we have today. Kids, 30, 40, 50 percent of all the kids in high school are dropping out, especially in the black neighborhoods. Yeah, that's a complaint I hear a great deal, especially in large cities like New York. Uh, Mr. Davidson, does the uh, National Youth Rights Association have any position on um, how public education can improve or if indeed we ought to have public education? Well, we don't take a position on the quality of education. Um, I mean, obviously, I personally believe that, you know, people should have a good education and that, that they should be a, have quality teachers or better than uh, substandard teachers. But what we feel, what w we focus on rights issues within education rather than entitlement issues within education. We um, we don't take positions on, say, funding and, and, and the quality of teachers as much as, as much as how much liberty someone has while they're in school. But okay. the, the, this energy is being expended in the wrong direction. It seems to me, sir, you should be taking uh, an interest in the quality of the education rather than whether kids uh, should be exposed constantly to an education or not. Well, I, 
I mean, I am personally in favor of, of quality. I'm talking about your organization, not you per se. Yeah. Our organization tries to address specific issues that aren't being addressed by other nonprofits and issues concerning the rights of young people rather than privileges. So it's 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 very it's a niche that that really doesn't um, that really doesn't address the, the quality of education so much as um, liberty in education. Okay. Now an issue that has always concerned me um, um, under the w wide umbrella of education is uh, ought public schools to be in the business of teaching values? Certainly it can be argued that private schools ought to have a right to teach whatever they like, but ought public schools to be teaching social values or should they just be sticking to facts and basic skills and so forth? Mr. Abu, did that issue come up at all when you were a school administrator? Unfortunately, Joseph, it did not. It did not. It seems to me that the the biggest beef in the school system where I when I, when I was there was kids dropping out of school, as I just got through enunciating a few moments ago, lack of educa lack of attendance, uh, that type of thing. I'm not going to keep repeating it. Right, um, Mr. Davidson, uh, does that issue ever come up amongst your organization, the the uh, teaching of social values as opposed to basic skills and basic information? Well, uh, I'll say at my high school, I just recently graduated high school, we, um, there's certainly a lot of emphasis on teaching social values. And, and do you think that's a good thing or not? It, it doesn't particularly offend me um, unless, unless it creates more of an obligation. I'd say that um, there's a growing trend with schools requiring mandatory community service. Yeah, and now that's something that really bugs me. That, that bugs me as well. I think that's, that's I mean, that's slavery. It, exactly. But, um, I, I, again, I think the people who create those policies are really well intentioned. But um, I, I well, don't I, feel you're that you're giving them a lot more benefit of the doubt than I would. I think I think that's, I feel that uh, they're misguided. I think it, it, it misguided and malicious. I would say it it, it takes um, it takes something great like public service and and you know helping your fellow man and it, it makes young people associate it with an obligation. And I think I think we we the National Youth Rights Association is against that. Well, exactly. Well, if I may, why does a brother here equate community service with with slavery? Well, I, I don't see the, the... It's mandatory community service. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with voluntary community service. He's talking about when they make it mandatory, then that's, that's a form of kidnapping or slavery or uh, servitude or whatever you want to call it. When you, when you discuss community service and you put the label slavery on it, you're, you're, you're taking uh, something that... Uh, you see the relationship? You see the lack of relationship? We're not, not, we're not talking about volunteer community service. We're talking about compulsory yeah, community what, service. What difference does it make, though? Slavery is slavery to a, a black, uh, such as I am. Slavery is a, is a terrible, terrible thing that occurred to... Well, slavery is a terrible thing for any race, I should say. Yeah, yeah but you, as a... Caucasian have never been uh, exposed to slavery as the blacks have been to slavery. You're a former slave, sir. Well, my my. Well, you can tell by the color of my uh, the pigmentation of my skin that my forefathers uh, that I'm the product of a former slave. Well, I, okay. I, well, my gosh, I I'm the product of a former slave too. My grandparents and great grandparents came from Russia where they were serfs. So you, uh, you were, I'm a descendant of a slave every bit as much as you are. You were an indentured servant. No, no, days. an indentured servant is not the same as a serf. And, and, and how uh, long, how long did your, your, your exposure, your parents' expo exposure Well, the Russian that? serfs were freed in 1861, uh, just two years different from when the uh, American slaves were freed in 1863. And it goes back a lot longer. But my point is that slavery is odious to anybody regardless of... Uh, their race or their color. Th this is why I object to uh, my friend here equating. Uh, well, I uh, I regret slavery. using the word slavery. Maybe involuntary this servitude. This is why the been. odiousness oh, of, right. of, of, of the, the, the institution of slavery should not even com come up in comparing uh, community service with slavery. Well, uh, mandatory community service is not for life, after all but it is a form of imposed servitude, whether it's for 20 minutes or for 20 years or for 200 years. And uh, I think the uh, point that uh, Mr. Davidson is making is that um, not only that, but the spirit of community service is something that ought to be voluntary. Joseph, you, you must admit, it shows a lack of sensitivity. 
No, I don't. I don't admit that at all. Yeah. Um, it might show a lack of sensitivity if people are going around looking for reasons to be offended, but um, we can't all help that, can we? I'm, I'm talking though about the, the difference between uh, volunteering to do something or having it forced upon them. Um, Lord knows it's bad enough that uh, education in itself is forced upon you, but uh, when you are told that you have got to give up a certain amount of your time to uh, so-called serving the community, then that, I think, may cross a line. Don't, would you agree, or are you more in favor of, uh, of mandatory community service? I see absolutely nothing wrong with uh, community service. I think it's an excellent idea that kids b become uh, good citizens by participating I, in this type of community service. I, I agree, and there's, uh, there's actually a high school for public service in New York, but I mean, you, you go to that for this intent of, of doing that and pursuing that, but um, I, I don't feel that someone, like where I live, there's a public school. And kids That's need, the public di school they need discipline. Kids must have discipline. They must be told what to do. They must be taught what to do. And these are some of the things that kids need in order for them to grow up to be individuals like yourself who uh, uh, make great contributions to society. Okay, uh, but there's, I, I wonder if there's a difference between um, teaching kids discipline and teaching them proper lessons and skills and so forth, or um, actually obliging them to do a certain type of work and subscribe to a certain ethic. Now, supposing I'm a high school student and I say, I don't think I ought to serve the community. I think that my job is to leave other people alone and be left alone tough, by them. Tough, tough, tough. Kids, you have, to, you have to serve the community. As a youngster, you're 15, 16, I, as an adult, am telling you, you must serve the community. This will, this will allow you to grow up to be a, a productive ci citizen of the community. Don't tell me I don't want to do it. You have to do it. Okay, so you are basically saying that you have the right to impose your, your values, your philosophy of life on a, um, on a young on a student. student. Of course. But you're not their parent. What difference does that make? I said to a judge many, a few years ago, I, I'm a court clerk, retired. I said, Judge, when, I'm a, when, I'm, when I was a youngster, my parents told me what to do. I said, when I went to the, the service, the, 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 the instructor told me what to do. I said, now I'm working for you, the judge. You t are telling me what to do. When do I do what I want to do? He said, Mr. Boo, you might never get to do what you want to do. And that's the state of affairs that the Libertarian Party is trying to change in our society. And I'm going to take a quick break from the action and remind our viewers that if you want to know more about the Libertarian Party and what we stand for and what we can do for you, or rather what we won't do to you, then uh, check out the Manhattan Libertarian Party's website, which is www.manhattanlp.org. And there you will find basic information about the Libertarian Party. You will also find links to the state and national Libertarian Parties. Once again, that is the Manhattan Libertarian Party, www.manhattanlp.org. And once again, to remind our viewers that our guests tonight are Scott Davidson, Secretary of the National Youth Rights Association, and Abu Abu, former president of Brooklyn's District 18 School Board, and we are discussing the various issues surrounding youth rights, the obligations surrounding education, particularly public education. And um, we have been talking largely about the obligation to community service. Now, um, Mr. Davidson, does the um, National Youth Rights Association have any uh, political philosophy as to whether the individual is a, um, a self-owning individual or whether he belongs to the state and therefore the state has certain rights, certain dominion over him? Well, we're um, entirely politically uh, nonpartisan, independent. Um, so anything that, that is broader than uh, the limited field of, of youth rights is beyond our scope. But we feel that um, rights that are granted currently to um, other citizens in society should be granted to young people as well. For instance, 
We don't take a position on the legalization of drugs because that applies to everyone, but we do take a position on, say, the minimum legal drinking age because that only applies to certain people, young people. Okay, well, now that we're not going to have too much of a controversy about because uh, all three of us agree that the drinking age ought to be lowered. Uh, now, uh, what I'm cons uh, concerned about at the moment is the idea that goes somewhat hand in hand with community service, and that is the idea of a draft. Uh, do you favor or oppose a draft, or do you take any position on that at all? Well, military draft, I mean. With the military draft, I'll, I'll tell you that personally, I'm opposed to it. But um, I, I don't know that Naira has a position on the draft. I don't believe that we do. And if we did, it wouldn't be for or against the draft itself. It would, it would just be opposed to age discrimination within the, within the draft. Okay. And do you take any position one way or the other on public versus private education? Um, we don't, but we, we feel that, that um, there are private educational institutions that are extremely abusive to young people. The behavior modification industry, um, your parents can just, you know, call these people and say they don't, you don't want to deal with your kid and send them to some school in Jamaica or Mexico where they're abused uh, severely. And uh, the Coalition Against Institutionalized Child Abuse um, also does a lot of work in that area. And we feel that public schools should essentially should honor Tinker v. Des Moines, which is the, the landmark Supreme Court ruling that um, said that young people have constitutional rights in public schools. Okay, what do you do, though, if you get a really um, obstreperous, obstructionist uh, kid in a uh, public school who just um, causes a lot of trouble, is a danger, a physical danger, to the other students and the faculty, and who um, impedes the learning process? How do you go about educating a kid like that? If someone is impeding the educational process, uh, we, we don't believe that they have a right to be doing that. You don't have a right to, to be terrorizing your teachers and, and your fellow students. They should be, you know, um, I guess some disciplinary action could be taken and eventually uh, kicked out of school if they continue to, to, to infringe on everyone else's rights. Okay, uh, Mr. Abu, when you were a uh, school administrator, did you have a, a clear-cut policy on how to handle uh, the, the real hard case students who uh, maybe would not be admitted to any private school, but here you are, you're running a public school, and you've got to take them. A youngster who misbehaved in school was, was placed in a room by himself, a barren room, no pictures on the walls, and he was allowed to sit there away from the other students and take his books with him if he wanted to learn. And it was a, like a jail-type like atmosphere. They were preparing the youngsters for, for the penitentiary. Yeah. And uh, this is the way the kids were treated in the uh, Bishop Gaping School. And I objected to it strenuously. Mm -hmm. What would your alternative method have been? I grew up in the West Indies as a youngster. And I had knots in my arms and knots in my back and knots in my head for my teacher who, when I misbehaved. And on account of those knots in my head, on my back, on my legs, I wind up with a first-rate education. And every time I see my teacher in the West Indies, I shake his hand, and there's always a few dollars in my hand thanking him for the great job he did to me and for me, and for kicking my rump. I now have a master's in, in uh, psychology from NYU and another master's in communication from NYU, thanks to my teacher. So uh, would you approve of corporal punishment in public schools here in New York? Unequivocally, yes. Okay, and uh, does your organization take a position one way or the other on that? Yeah, absolutely not, no corporal punishment. Okay, and uh, what would your rationale be for opposing it? Uh, it's authoritarian. I mean, it, it just harkens back to the Middle Ages when people were punished corporally. It's, it's, a, it's regressive, it's, it's disgusting, and it, in, it infringes on someone's rights. And so it's al it's also contributes to the lack of education and the, 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 the overflowing of uh, members in the penitentiary on Rikers Island. Okay. Uh, now, um, that's a question on which obviously you two are going to agree to disagree. I'm not a big fan of corporal punishment, but I can see Mr. Abu's uh, thinking on it. Um, but my question now is a matter of who holds sway over a, um, an underage uh, child, the school slash state or the parents. At what point does a parent's right to raise his own child end and the uh, state's right to um, control that child begin? Do you have a position on any of those issues? 
Well, actually, um, one of the things I'd like to do on the board next year is uh, create a position on the, the dynamic between young people and their parents. But essentially, the youth rights uh, philosophy on that is that a young per a parent can impose rules on a young person and that they can, they can um, deny services that they pay for. Most young people are financially dependent on their parents. So a parent can say, if you don't engage in X behavior, I'll remove Y thing that I pay for. But we don't feel that they have um, a right to impose curfews or, or to say that, you know, you, or to Even on a child who's, say, eight years old? No, they can, uh, uh, um, the, the youth rights, um, I, we typically don't deal with children as young as eight years old. That's so, that's really far in the future for the struggle. But we believe that um, a parent does have, have a right to, does not have any obligation to, to say, you know, pay for a, a cable or a computer or phone for the, a young person and that, and that they, can, they can take those things away. In other words, basic favor. services could be used as incentives. Yes. Um, but should a, a kid of, say, eight or nine years old be uh, allowed to um, uh, stay out and do whatever the heck he likes until uh, all hours of the morning, or should the parents have some right to, um, to take him inside at a reasonable hour and keep him confined? Well, I don't know that they should have a right to, to forcibly take that person inside, but they, they have a right to coerce that behavior by saying, um, you know, if, you, if you don't do that, well, you know, where are you going to find food? Where are you going to find uh, the money for all the nice things that you enjoy? We provide that, so you should, you should abide by these standards. And uh, do you favor a certain age at which a, a child could uh, have himself legally emancipated? We do have a position on emancipation. We think that... Um, uh, emancipation is a viable option for a lot of young people, and that and that it should be it should be easier to pursue. Okay, Mr. Abu, is that is that an issue that ever came to your attention in, in your career as a school administrator? No, but uh, if you if you give youngsters all the rights that my friend here thinks they should possess, anarchy would result. Well, and some people would say that might not be a bad thing, but <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, a parent today is not allowed to chastise his youngster or her youngster, but a cop is allowed to shoot a kid in the head. And that's uh, a very interesting and valid point, but uh, I'm afraid that it's a point we're going to have to bring up on another show. But thank you, gentlemen, both very much for showing up tonight. You both uh, provided some very enlightening viewpoints on this very large and complex subject. And so for now, we just have to say thank you to both of you, Scott Davidson, Abu Abu, and I am Joseph Dobrian. Good night once more from Hardfire.